welcome back to my channel. I'm Rachel, the owner and creator here at The Eclectic Cottage in Spokane, Washington. Today's Friday and for today's video I have a thrift flip for you guys. And I had some fun with a few different paint techniques, a couple colors that I don't normally use. And so can't wait to show you guys what I came up with. And without further ado, let's get to today's projects. My first project for today are these adorable little ceramic ducks. I had forgotten I even had these. They were stashed in kind of a weird spot in my kitchen. And I found them the other day and thought, you know, these would be perfect out in my spring displays with some of my other little animals. So I decided to go ahead and paint them. I'm starting off by giving them a base coat of Rust-Oleum 2X spray paint in white just to give them an even color to start with. Then I decided I wanted these birds to look kind of like concrete and I am starting by stippling or pouncing on two coats of DIY's color letterpress gray. This is going to act as my base coat and I am going to build uh, different colors on top of this to hopefully get that concrete look that I'm going for. Like I said, I did end up going over these guys twice, letting them dry completely in between each coat of paint. And then it was time to go to my next step, which is DIY's crinoline. So I went over the birds again, pouncing that paint on and uh, just not being too cautious to make sure I got full coverage. I wanted a little bit of that gray to show through, uh, but I wanted this crinoline to also be part of my base coat for these birds. I really wanted these little ducks to have lots of texture and dimension to them. So I am going over again with the crinoline and once I'm done with that and it's dry again, I grabbed DIY's Old School to give more depth to these colors. This is definitely a darker gray, almost like a charcoal color. And this is going to be kind of my shadow effect in this uh, three color blending um, paint job that I am trying to achieve here. And again, the idea is not to get full coverage with this dark color, but to just add some shadowy areas to my little duck. Once I had added in my dark color, I went back to the letterpress gray, and this is where the paints start to kind of blend just a little bit, and the texture and dimension really starts to kind of come through. So once I did that and I was happy, I went back in with just a little bit more of the dark, dark color again, uh, just to cover a few areas that seemed a little light to me. The nice thing about this is you can just keep working with your paints, adding a little bit more light or a little bit more dark. Uh, just if you're like me, at some point you need to say enough's enough and just uh, finish up your piece. I could keep pouncing all day long. It's kind of therapeutic, uh, but at some point you really need to call it and be done. <laughs> so once I was done with that, I went back again with some crinoline and I'm not waiting for these paints to be completely dry just because they do a little bit of blending, which is awesome. And that's where this concrete look kind of starts really uh, coming together. Once I had blended the crinoline in completely with the other two colors and I was happy with the way my little duck was looking, it was time to let it sit and dry while I worked on his little partner back there. And once they were both done, it was time to seal my paint. This is kind of where the magic really happens because the wax that I'm using, this is DIY's clear wax, really helps uh, bring out all of the beautiful colors 
colors and differentiate between the three and just really deepen and darken them, which I love. So I'm just adding one coat of DIY's clear wax to both of these little ducks and then this project is finished. I love how these guys turn out. They will be perfect in my spring displays and I hope you guys like them too. For project two, I am starting by sanding off the images on these two wooden plaques. Now, you guys, this was a difficult decision for me to make. I loved the original artwork on these, uh, but I had had them for sale in my shop for almost a year, no takers, and so I decided it was time to do something different with these. So I went ahead and sanded them. Once I got started, it wasn't so bad, but man, it took everything I had to get started. <laughs> so I sanded off the images, made sure everything was really smooth, wiped them down with a damp shop towel. And for this particular uh, project, I am going to be using these to create risers. So I began by uh, spray painting them. This is Espresso by uh, Rust-Oleum in their 2X spray paint. And for the base of my risers, I'm using these two candle holders that I found not too long ago at one of the Goodwills. Now I'd already decided that I wanted to do a crackle finish on these. And the first step for that is to give them a coat of spray paint, which I'm doing. And then before your spray paint is completely dry, so while it's still tacky, uh, go over it with your Sweet Pickens milk paint. For these, I picked a color that's a little different than my norm. This is called Wildflower. It's kind of a deep pink. It's really a pretty color, really great for spring. So I painted all of my pieces with one good coat of Wildflower and then set everything aside to dry. Once everything was nice and dry, I grabbed my candlesticks again and gave them a second coat of paint. This time, though, instead of letting them dry on their own, I am grabbing my hair dryer and I am speeding that process up and helping that spray paint underneath dry a little faster and creating a beautiful crackle effect. Then I set my hair dryer down and went over them with a third coat of the wildflower paint. And uh, once I was done painting the piece again, I used my hair dryer again to dry the paint. Here's a little close up of what that crackle finish looks like. Once I'd done the, both candle holders, I moved on to the plaques and I am using the same exact technique here, giving them each one coat of the uh, wildflower paint and then using my hairdryer to really make those cracks pop. And then once that's done, I give them one final coat of paint just to make sure I've got really good coverage. And then again, use my hair dryer uh, to make sure those cracks really come through. Once I'd finished painting all four of my pieces and all of them were completely dry, I did decide to go and go ahead and do a little bit of light distressing. So I grabbed some 220 grit sandpaper and just went over a few of the details of these pieces to bring back a little bit of that beautiful dark brown color from underneath this pink paint. Once I was finished with the distressing, I wiped everything back down with a damp shop towel and then I moved on to sealing my paint. Now like DIY paint, Sweet Pickens Milk Paint also needs to be sealed. And for this, I chose uh, their dark oil wax, which is probably my favorite go-to uh, to seal uh, the milk paint. I love how it richens up the color, gives just a little bit of a beautiful patina, and it's just a gorgeous way to finish off the milk paint. 
So I'm using a chip brush and I pour a little bit of the dark oil wax into a little bowl. The thing with this is you need to be careful to shake, shake, shake your oil wax before you use it because all of the pigment settles to the bottom. And if you don't, you'll end up just with clear wax, which you don't want. So <laughs> once I was done I'm putting one coat of the dark oil wax all over the backside of my plaques and the candle holders, I just took a shop towel and and wiped off the excess I did let the oil wax sit on my pieces for about 15 minutes before I uh, wiped them back down and it was actually as I was doing this that I decided I wanted to decorate the top of my little riser so I ended up not putting any oil wax on the tops at this point I just happened to have this one sheet of this transfer set called Bright Meadow by Redesign with Prima that has almost the exact same pink in it as what I had used to paint these little risers. And since I only had the one sheet, I just very carefully cut it in half going along the lines of one of the larger flowers and then just cut off a couple other little pieces to make one of the uh, bigger chunks fit on one side of the risers. So I peeled back my backing and then just laid it down, uh, pushed it into the paint with my fingers and then began applying the transfer using a transfer stick. These are really, really easy to apply and you just rub that transfer into your paint using the stick, peeling back that piece of vellum off of the top as you go, making sure that if you lift any of your transfer, you lay that piece of vellum back down and then just rub again to lay that piece back down. Then you burnish your transfer in. I use my fingers first and then I grab a piece of that vellum and just really rub the transfer down into the paint. That helps make sure that there aren't any bubbles in your transfer and it helps alleviate some of the little halos around some of the bits and pieces. Then I took the other half and I just kept cutting off little bits and chunks until I was happy with how it laid on the other plaque and again just laid it down where I wanted it and used that transfer stick to apply my transfer. Once I had the larger portion of my transfer laid down, I gathered up some of the bits and pieces that I had cut off and just layered those on top of the other part of the transfer. Just kind of filling in some spaces and adding a little bit of different colors here and there, uh, mainly just because I didn't want to waste any of my transfer set. And this was a great way to just kind of build on what I already had. Lastly, it's time to seal these guys. And I just grabbed my uh, little chip brush and my dark oil wax and gave them one good coat of the dark oil wax. And again, let them sit for about 15 minutes came back with my shop towel and wiped back the excess and then the painting and decorating part of this is finally done and it's time to put my risers together so for that i grabbed out my e6000 glue and i flipped over both of my little plaques and popped a little bit of glue onto uh, my candle holders and then centered them as best I could and then I did grab a measuring tape just to make sure I was right directly in the center. Once this was finished I was done with my little risers and I absolutely love how they came out. My third and final project for today is this mail sorter that I've had in my stash for a while. I started by taking the hooks off of the sides and the little labels off of the front. Now, unfortunately, one of the hooks at some point had been ripped off of this mail sorter. So rather than try to find another hook, I decided to go ahead and leave them off completely. So I am just taking some Durham water putty and filling the holes where the hooks used to be. 
Once the water putty is completely dry, I did take some sandpaper and just sanded over uh, the holes to make sure that they were nice and smooth. Then I washed everything back down with a damp shop towel. Then it was on to paint. Now for this, I am using a color you guys don't often see me use. This is white. Technically, this is white linen. It's one of the beautiful cottage colors curated by Jamie Ray Vintage for DIY paint. The great thing about these particular paints is that the sealer is built in. So once you're finished painting your piece, you don't need to do anything else to it. No big top, no liquid patina, no wax. They're just done, which is awesome. Now, the only thing about this uh, particular piece was that this raw wood really sucked in that paint. Uh, the first coat when I was done, it basically looked like I had whitewashed it. And so it did take me four coats of the paint to get it nice and white like I wanted. Now this paint, since it does have a built-in sealer, does dry with a little bit of a sheen, nothing too major, uh, but definitely kind of a satiny finish as opposed to the very matte finish of the regular uh, clay-based DIY paint. And if you haven't heard, DIY is coming out with six new absolutely fantastic colors of this paint on March 28th. Once I'd finished painting my piece and it was completely dry, I grabbed my decoupage paper that I wanted to use for the front of this. Now I'd already cut it in strips and ironed it to get out the wrinkles. And I am just laying down a little starter strip of DIY's liquid patina and then pressing my paper down into it and then adding another strip of the liquid patina and then using my brush and my hand, I'm pressing that paper down and then I just keep moving my way across the front of that board using the patina and then laying my paper down. Once I have my paper completely down, I went over it with a really good coat of DIY's liquid patina. This fibrous paper by Redesign with Prima does tend to require just a little bit more of the decoupage medium uh, to keep it nice and uh, adhered to your piece. And since I forgot to mention it earlier, uh, this decoupage paper is called Bright Meadow and I chose it because it had a nice white background and also I loved all of the different colors in it. Then it's time to sand off my excess paper. The key here is to make sure your decoupage medium is completely dry before you attempt to do this. And I'm just using some 150 grit sandpaper and a downward sweeping motion to release that excess paper from my piece. Then I did just a little bit of distressing, mainly because as I was sanding off the edges of the paper, it automatically kind of sanded a little bit of the wood back. And so I thought this would kind of make everything blend together. Nothing too drastic, just a little bit of that gray tone showing through the paint. Then it was on to reattaching my little hardware pieces so that I could put my uh, chalkboard labels back into their slots. And then this mail sorter is completely done. And I am really, really happy with how it looks. It's so nice and bright and cheerful. And honestly, I'm kind of tempted to put it in my own office at home. from here for today you guys I hope you liked my projects and I hope you enjoyed the video if you did please remember to give it a thumbs up I so appreciate that and if you haven't already I would absolutely love it if you would subscribe to my channel and then just hit that little notification bell so you don't miss anything also don't forget to comment below and let me know which of the projects in today's video your favorite was just a reminder too any of the paint and products you saw me use today can be purchased through me and my website and that's www.theeclectic cottage spokane.com 
It's listed in the description box below. I can hardly wait to show you guys the new cottage colors. They are absolutely fantastic. So uh, stay tuned for updates on those. Uh, they will definitely be available on my website as soon as I can release them. They're on their way now. Uh, and then for Tuesday's video, I will definitely have another thrift flip for you guys. I've already started working on some projects for that, so I can hardly wait to show them to you. I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Uh, the sun is actually shining here. It feels a lot like spring outside, so that's really exciting. And anyway, I will see you guys back here for Tuesday's video. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. See you Tuesday. Bye.